I can create a new empty array in Ruby using the array class or the square brackets notation to create an empty array literal. To populate the array with some initial values, we can pass an argument to the new method, and in this case we're initializing the array with five nil elements. Or in the case of the array literal, inside the square brackets we can write a list of comma-separated values of the same or of a different type. And here we're using the each method and string interpolation to print out the values of each of the elements of both arrays. And here we see that the array that we initialized using the array class and passing the argument 5 to the new method resulted in an array consisting of 5 nil elements, while array B consists of the numbers 1 through 5. If we want to initialize this array object so that it contains values other than nil, we can pass a second argument to the new method, in this case the number zero, and now the output indicates that the array A contains five zero elements. If we want array A to contain the numbers one through five just like array B, we can use a block, and in this case the value of each element will be initialized by adding one to its index. Because the first value in an array has an index of zero, the first element in this array will have a value of 0 plus 1, just like array B. The second element, which has an index of 1, will be initialized with the value 2. So the return value from this block is stored as the value of the element. And if we look at the output, we see that the two arrays both contain the values 1 through 5 now. If I prefer, I can also use the bracket syntax with the array class, just as I do with the array literal below it. Just as I can use percent lowercase q and percent uppercase q to define single quote and double quote format strings using non-standard delimiters in place of quotes, I can also use percent lowercase w or percent uppercase w to define an array of strings without the need to use quotes as long as I separate each of the elements of the array with spaces. So in this example, I'm using lowercase w, which is equivalent to using single quote format for delimiting the strings. So if I run this, I see that the array elements contain the new line character rather than interpreting the character, whereas if I use an uppercase w, the same array definition results in the new line characters being interpreted and each of the array elements being represented in its double quote format, just as when we use percent uppercase q to define a double quote format string using a non-standard delimiter. And here you can see I've modified the example slightly to use left and right angle brackets instead of square brackets, just to demonstrate that that's possible. And if I run the program, it has no effect on the output versus using square brackets. When we instantiate a new array, we can initialize it to contain the values of an existing array. And in this example, we define the array A to contain the values 1 through 5. And then we define the array B by calling the array.new method and passing the array A as an argument to the method. Down below, we print out the values of the A and B arrays, but only after clearing out the values of the A array to verify that array B is not just pointing to array A, but is a new object. And if we look at the output, we see that after calling the clear method, we have emptied array A of its values, while B contains all of the values that array A had initially. And just to demonstrate that we can have multiple types of objects in an array, I've created an array in which the first element is an array consisting of five elements. The second element is a range representing the numbers one through five. The third element is a symbol. The fourth is a string. The fifth is an integer. The sixth is a float. And the seventh is an empty hash. And on this line, I'm using the each method to iterate over the array and print out the class of each of the elements. And if we look at the output, we see that it verifies that this array contains multiple types of objects.